Rain! 
Isn't that great this morning? Amen. Amen. If you sing, of course, I don't do much of that, but I guarantee you, those type of songs are not easy to sing. And great job. Take your Bible, if you would. You should be at Romans 7. Go ahead and stand with me. I want to take a little bit more time this morning, get Brother Durham out to do announcements at the end, because I've got a lot to cover here, and I want to have enough time to preach and still get our buses going and so forth. And he'll give you announcements real quick at the end. But I'm going to read a little more Scripture today, so I want to do things a little different. Romans chapter number 7. And I want you to look at verse number 7. I doubt we'll finish this morning, the message, uh, hopefully maybe this morning and tonight. But I, I want to just try to help you this morning, uh, help all of us. The Bible says, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. Now, what Paul is saying is, if there is no law... There's nothing to break. But once there is a law, you know you'll not break that law. And he's talking about God's law. Verse 8, But sin, taking occasion by uh, the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscences. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. The commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, just, and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me, God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin." For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. What a powerful verse right there that is. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. You remember who's saying all this, right? This is one of the greatest preachers that ever lived. One of the greatest Christians that ever walked. And yet, here's what Paul's saying. He said, I can't even do sometime what I ought to do. Boy, if that's Paul saying that, my soul. Can you imagine us and where we are? The Bible says, and go a little farther, uh, verse number 21, I find in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. God spoke to my heart two days ago about a message that I want to preach today. And I'm going to just take my time. And I don't know I'll get done with it this morning. But I think the title of the message will say a whole lot today about what I want to preach. I want to preach on this thought today, a willing heart and wicked flesh. A willing heart and wicked flesh. You find both of those in the passage I just read. You find it through the Word of God. I will introduce to you this morning where I'm coming from 
and we'll deal with the fix or at least the start of it. I want to ask you a question before you're seated. I wonder how many in this auditorium have a heart for God. I wonder in this auditorium today if you would say that I have a heart for God. I have a heart to serve God. I love God. I have a heart to live for God. And in your heart, you firmly believe that you have a heart for God. Brother Kerry, I appreciate the lesson this morning. I'll say something to you. I got one thing out of the lesson bigger than anything else you said the whole time, and it was never a word you spoke. I listened to you, and I heard your heart. It's one thing I love about this man. I love his heart. I want to ask you today, do you have a heart for God? If you have a heart for God, why do you keep failing Him? Why do you keep on in your life and my life and His life? Why do we keep on doing wrong, struggling, making bad decisions? According to the Bible I just read, because in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Can I say this to you today? Go have a seat out there. So you don't have to sit up here. I know you don't feel good now. I can feel like coming across here. Sit over there to Miss Kristen and take care of you. Can I say this today? And I believe this with all my heart. I believe with all my heart we're never going to have complete victory until we get out of this flesh. Amen. Wendy, I found one of those tie chains. It was in my pocket. Let's bow together and pray. Father, thank you so much today, Lord, for my goodness, the good song Miss Chesney sung to us, the talent. Thank you for this great number here today. Lord, and I hope this church can sense my burden for America. Lord, it's really not for me, Lord. I'm 51 years old. But God, it is for these young people. And it is for these children. And yeah, God, I am broke over it. Because Lord, what are they going to grow up in? When I hear my daughter talking about graduating from college and ready to go on with her life, and then I look at an America today, that's just not what I come up in, God. What are they going to face? Lord, for the remnant that are here today, God, may we sense revival in our hearts. God, I need it in my own life. Lord, I really do. God, I need you to help me to keep on plowing the rows and keeping them straight. Lord, I pray today you'll speak to us in this message. Give us what we need today. God, I know today, Lord, this is ordained of heaven. Thank you for telling me what to preach today. In Christ's name, all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. You've been great. Thank you so much. This morning, I really just want to address the child of God. And I want to address our constant battle to do well. Did you not read here in chapter number 7 with me a minute ago? All through chapter number 7, did you not just read with me how the Apostle Paul said that he struggles every single day to do right? Matter of fact, the Paul, Apostle Paul is the one that wrote the words in the Word of God like this, I die daily. The Apostle Paul is the one who wrote the Word of God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I live now, the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know what Paul said? Paul said, every single day of my life, I have to die daily. Every single day of my life. I have to die. You know what? I'm amazed. I want to say this today. The reason the mega church has great growth, the reason that the liberal and the carnal has great growth today is because people feel like they can have a little bit of God but keep on living like they're living because it's too hard to have a lot of God and live right and a lot of people just don't want to deal with it. We'll say something to you today. I'll be honest with you. I used to hear men, and I never understood why. I used to hear it said about preachers that they're just tired of fighting it. And I didn't really know what that meant. They're just tired of fighting it. 
That is tired of trying to make people live right. No, no doubt sometimes we're trying to make uh, wolves act like sheep and you can't do that. I mean, you've got to be saved or you can't even live for God anyway. Amen. I mean, it's tough enough when you got the Holy Ghost in you, but when it's not in you, it's really hard. Amen. And so I've heard them say that for years. I'm just tired of fighting it. I'm tired of it. I'm just going to get my paycheck and go to the house. I'm just, listen, I'm telling you, I didn't used to understand that, but the longer I live and the more I'm in the ministry, the more you realize, buddy, this ain't a playground, it's a battlefield, and I'm telling you, the battle's up on the front lines, and we need to realize we can have a heart for God and still be a complete failure. Now, I want to help you today. And really, to get all the help you need, you got to come back tonight. Because I don't think I can finish three pages of things that I typed up. And you got to understand, when I type three pages, that's an endeavor. <laughs> because I peck, you know, and it takes a while. I told my wife, I'm not too old to take a typing lesson. I like to learn how to type. Is typing hard? I like to try to learn how to type. You know, but anyway, that's a different sermon. Jesus summed up what I'm trying to preach today with one statement. The statement is John 14, 15, where he said, If you love me, keep my commandments. What a statement that is, what I'm saying. Jesus said, if you love me, that's your heart. Keep my commandments. That is making sure your flesh stays in line. If you love me, keep my commandments. So you understand that what the Lord is saying to all of us is if you love him, if your love generates you doing right, you're going to be better off than if mechanics generate you doing right. A lot of people don't do right simply because their love for Christ is not what it ought to be. I have often said the reason we should do right is not because we have to keep a rule, but because we love Jesus. And there ain't nothing in this world that breaks my heart more than when Chris Hazlip breaks the heart of God. There is nothing that bothers me more in my life. I can't rest. I'm not at peace. I struggle in my life if I fail God. Friend, I don't know about you, but he has been so good to me. I, I was going through uh, yesterday through the woods on my bicycle just riding it uh, before I went down to pick up my daughter in college. And, and I was riding it. And I just came down through that all of a sudden just overwhelming me as I was riding down this path. I began to think, man alive, God. God's been good to me. Man alive. I shouldn't fail God. He doesn't fail me. I should love him with all my heart. And maybe if I loved him like I should, I'd do right. I'm a fundamental Baptist pastor. And what scares me in churches like this one and others all across the country is we're doing right for the wrong reasons. Is we're doing right by the commandment of men. Is we're doing right because it's what you do. But is it driven with a heart and a love for God? Stay with me today. I want to help you like God helped me. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm your pastor. I'm the spiritual leader of this church. I'm not the best one, but I'm what you got. And I want you to understand in this day and time, more than ever, your children need you spiritual. Your grandkids need you spiritual. Somebody needs to take the blinders off and we need to realize the mess that we are in. When I see things like in Caldwell County uh, where a girl is smashing another girl's face into the cement while people are videoing it and the parents are encouraging her to do it and they're screaming for her to do it and they're throwing all kind of language and cussing and sweat. I'm talking about the mom and daddy are saying beat the brains out on the cement. Why are we so angry? 
What's wrong with us? When somebody beats you to the bargain and you shove people out of the way, somebody cuts us off in traffic and Christians all of a sudden become lost again, even though you can't lose that. But we say we have a heart for God. Oh, preacher, I have a heart for God. But my question is, if we have a heart for God, why do we keep letting our wicked flesh get the best of us? Do you want any help? Am I the only one? Maybe I just need to go home and preach this to me. And Wendy, she needs it. Daniel's don't. She's perfect. I want to give you three instances in the Word of God to think about. Now, you don't have to turn here. You know them. And, and I'm going to get back to Romans 7 before we're done. Won't be done this morning, but I'll get back. This is why I needed the time this morning. But I want you to think about King David. The Bible says in 2 Samuel 7, 3, And Nathan said to the king, talking to David, Go do all that is in thine heart for the Lord for thee to do. Nathan said to David, David, I know, King David, I know you love God with all your heart. He said, go do in your heart what you want to do for God. Amen. Do I believe David had a heart for God? Read the Psalms. Think about this in King David's life. And Solomon said, thou hast shewed unto thy servant David, talking about his daddy, my father, great mercy, according as he has walked before thee in truth and righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. You know what he said? He said, God, David, my daddy has a heart for you. How do you have a heart for God? Stay on top of a roof. Desire a woman. Have a fling with her. Get her husband killed because you don't want to be found out. Have a man of God look you in the face and say, Thou art the man. Get the sword to never depart out of your house. But you have a heart for God. What happens? You think the Apostle Paul under inspiration just gave us Romans chapter 7 to help us in our Bible reading? No. The Apostle Paul is letting all of us know your flesh is wicked. My flesh is wicked. Are you with me this morning? God is letting us know Listen, God is saying to you, as long as you're encapsulated in this body, as long as you're in this flesh, buddy, it's going to be a battle. What a happy, happy, happy day it's going to be when I step out of this robe of flesh and I'm with my Lord and I never had to worry about, hallelujah, this flesh again. Some people say that's what heaven means to me, right? Think about the Apostle Peter. Matthew 26. Did he have a heart for God? Well, listen. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. You think he meant that? You can respond. You think he meant that? Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. When Jesus said that, Peter said to him, I can see it. He said, Lord, though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. You know what he's saying? God, you've got my heart. God, you have got my heart. I gave you my heart. I left my fishing nets. I got off my ship. I've been to become a fisher of men. I give out the gospel. God, you've got my heart. I would never do that. I would never deny you. I would never, never. Do you believe he meant it? Absolutely. 100% he meant it. No doubt he meant it. No doubt. No doubt. The Bible says, and again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him that they stood by and said to Peter, 
Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech betrayeth thee, bereath thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. Wait a minute. Here's a man with a heart for God. Wait a minute, David. Here's a man with a heart for God. And yet both of them. If I would ask most young people, tell me something about King David. You know what most people say? Oh, he's the one that had that deal with Bathsheba. If I would say, tell me something about the Apostle Peter. Oh, the Apostle Peter's the one that denied the Lord by the fire. I wonder what people say when they mention your name. What about Chris Hazlett? What about Dermot Crabtree? Oh, he's the one. He's the one. He's the one I saw in the Budweiser aisle the other week. Not me, Brother Dermot. <laughs> he's the one I pulled up beside her. She's the one I pulled up beside on Church Street and listened to the thumping in the car and the cussing through the speakers. Oh, that's the one that treated their Christian friend like garbage and stab them in the back and talks about them when they're not around. But they have a heart for God. I don't think I'm being mean. I'm being honest. I, I'm preaching to you and I'm preaching to me as well. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I'm telling you, this battle with the flesh is tough. I haven't even got to the first point of the message yet. Amen. And the way God gave it to me, I just, I'm just going to be patient Amen. and we'll get all of it in. The only thing I hate for those of you that won't come back tonight is you're going to miss the antidote of how to deal with this thing. And I hope you get to come back. If you don't, at least look, look maybe by internet. What about the Apostle Paul? Here's our text. Let's go back. Romans 7. Romans 7 verse 15, here's what the Apostle Paul said, For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would do, now watch this, For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. You ever do something in your life as a Christian, and you even hate it, and you think, I, I even hate this, and I still did it. I'll give you the analogy. And, you know, we laugh about this struggle with me because it's been a struggle all my life with this eating deal. I hate being sluggish. I hate pants being tight. I hate feeling like you walk in like they ought to write words on you and fly you over the building. I hate stuff like that. But I don't hate it as bad as I do M&M's. I have a greater love for M&M's than I do for the hatred of being... You see what I'm saying? But you know what? I can get that big five pound bag of M&M's and when I'm eating them, I'm not hating it. I mean, boy, when I'm eating them things, I'm thinking, glory, glory, glory. And then I get done on Sunday morning. I get up, and my britches are begging for mercy. And then I hate it. I enjoyed it until the consequences of it, then I hate it. Why do we do things we hate? As a child of God, if we know God's against it and we know it's going to make us miserable, why do we do it? Because our flesh is dominating our life. I'm going to end up here in a second and then we'll move on from this tonight. And I hope you come back. But don't you listen? And I'm certainly not bashing these people, but you know, you've had for years big things, talk shows. You got Dr. Phil, 
you know, Oprah and Sally Jesse and, and I mean, everybody becomes a talk show host. And all of them got a thing. And they've always got a reason why people do what they do. You know, and, and I mean, I've never seen on The Biggest Loser, when I used to watch it, on The Biggest Loser, it's always, my, my mama didn't treat me well now, so I started eating. Or I've just had a tough childhood, so I just, I turned to food. Let me say something to you. The reason I turn to food, I like it. <laughs> It ain't got nothing to do with my mama. It ain't got nothing to do with my daddy. It ain't got nothing to do with You know why I eat peanut M&M's to oblivion? I like them. Do you know why we do what we do? Because our flesh likes it. We might have a heart for God, but that heart for God does not supersede the fact that my flesh wants something that God don't want me to have. That's why people fornicate out of marriage that say they're Christians, and I believe some of them are. That's why people commit adultery that say they're Christians, and I believe some of them are. Why? Because their love for God does not supersede their love for their flesh. And until we get to the place, Brother Kerry, in our life, that our heart for God means more than our flesh, we are never going to walk in victory. You know, Miss Wendy has to, and I use the analogy because I'm tying in, she has to get tired of hearing it. I'm so fat. I'm worse than a woman. I'm so fat. I'm so fat. And she sits there the whole time watching me eat the m and I'm like a chipmunk. I'm so fat. I'm so fat. Right? You know, today we call it husky. They're just husky. You're big bone. Yeah, right. You're fat, man. You eat too many m and ms Why? I'll be honest with you. My love for my clothes fitting does not supersede. My love for them green and red. Hallelujah. <laughs> M&M's. And I want to say this. And don't you think about the message today. All kidding aside. Look at this great number in this church on Sunday morning. Surely somebody here has got a heart for God. Brother Robert, do you do what you do on the bus because you have a heart for God? Would you be willing to say that? Would you be willing to say, Brother Russ, that you work back into greeter and, and do things? Do you do that because you have a heart for God? Do you sing with your wife and those in, in the choir? Because you would say that, wouldn't you? Then, Brother Russ, why do you find yourself letting God down so much? If you've got a heart for Him. And I'm not picking on Him, I'm talking about me. I'm going to tell you why. Because my love for Chris, my love for my flesh, supersedes my love for God. And we're never spiritual. And we're never spiritual until our love for God supersedes our love for self. And as Brother Kerry said this morning, we'll get out of the car. Amen. Or shut the door. All that Yankee stuff. Amen. I'm, I'm telling you, Brother Kerry, that's right. That's right. When you realize in your life that your love for God has to supersede your love for your flesh, you'll start becoming spiritual. Amen. Amen. And by the way, God gave me every bit of what I'm getting ready to preach. No other preacher. I use a lot of stuff from a lot of people. But I'm telling you, riding through the woods sovereignly, as I began to thank God for His goodness to me, God began to ask me, if you love me so much, why do you fail me? Preacher, you fa- Yeah, I get cold. I was on conviction this morning. Brother Kerry talking about reading his Bible two times through this year. First year he got saved, read through his Bible three times. First year he got saved. There's a lot of us don't read three verses a day. 
Well, we love God. And I guarantee you, if we taped criminal minds, we won't miss it. Because our flesh likes that. Does anybody feel like you want to run to the altar and just crawl up and say, Oh Lord, have mercy. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. I'm preaching this morning on a heart for God and wicked flesh. I don't want you to miss tonight. I really believe God saw me. I've still got three points and three points under three points. And I never do three points under points. I never do. I used to do three. But I've got some things I want to share with you. Brother Crabtree is going to give you the announcements after we have the invitation. We're going to go home. I wish you'd come back tonight. I can't make you. If you're visiting, I wish you'd come back. I really think this can help you to get some victory in your life. And I'd love for you to come back. And I wish I could have finished it today. I almost preached for the hour. Never had singing or nothing. Just preached the whole hour. Might do that sometime. Just preach an hour. Go home. I'm just afraid some of y'all fall out a window like Eutychus did. Amen. <laughs> you stand with me just a moment. I want you to look at me just for a moment. Brother James, I know you don't feel like singing and, and so forth. Uh, we're just... You, you, That'll, that'll be great. We can get me to say, thank you so much for helping us today. I want everybody to listen to me. Did, did you get the thought? By the way, young people, thank you guys. You've been awesome today. Thank you. This preacher loves you more than you'll ever know. He do, really does. I promise you. Because a lot of people, a lot of preachers don't want bus ministries because they don't want to deal with it. But I'm telling you, I have a heart for young people. I know what you're getting ready to face. This world's wicked, Amen. cruel. Now listen to me just a moment. This is just the start of the message. I feel like I didn't really introduce it really well. But I think there was enough said convicting. Sister Russell and I was riding through those woods yesterday. I mean, I'm, I'm being honest. I'm not, I'm not in any way trying to hype this up or nothing. I began to think about how good God's been to me. I mean, it hit me out of nowhere. I agree, Miss Pam. Save me. Gave me a great family. Couldn't nobody have a better family than God gave me. I mean that. And you'd probably say the same thing. I mean, He loads me daily with benefits. And I'll be honest with you, Brother Robert, I have a heart for God. I do. I have a heart for God. But boy, sometimes I sure feel like I got more of a heart for Chris than I do for God. And that breaks my heart. I wonder today what God could do in a church like this if we would just say no to our flesh just every now and then. And say today, Jesus, I'm going to have a heart for you. I'm not going to deny you. I'm not going to be on the rooftop. I'm going to have a heart for God. A heart for God. I wonder what we could do and what we could be. I'm talking about a heart for God and wicked flesh. Wonder how we could sing, My Jesus, I love thee, if we really, really had a heart for God. I don't want you to miss tonight. I'm telling you, I believe God sovereignly gave me some things to give you. I really do. I think it's probably just as much for me. For anybody might think, Oh, that's some old judgmental preacher and he's mean spirited. I got news for you, buddy. I'm right there with you. I can sit beside of you in the seat. You know why I went to Sunday school day? I went to Sunday school day so God could rip my heart apart about something. You say, why? Every now and then, I just want the Word of God to come in me so I can be better. And I give out all the time. And boy, this morning, Brother Kerry up our teaching from his heart. That was getting a hold of me. And I thought, well, thank you, Lord. 
Because I want to be better. Well, you're my pastor. What well, do you need to be better for? Because I'm still wrapped in flesh. Miss Chess is going to sing a little for you. Boy, I appreciate the Spirit of God this morning. I appreciate God being here. Hallelujah. Miss Chessie, would you sing a little for me, sweetheart? My Jesus, I love oh, yeah. Won't you worship Him a minute right there? Won't you just have yourself a little worship time right there? And you know what I'm convinced of? Most of you in here in this building this morning, you do love Him. I'm convinced you do have a heart for Him. But does our heart for Him supersede our heart for self? Who do I love more? Myself or the Lord? Lord, I feel a touch of the Holy Ghost, Mother Crabtree. God help me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Miss Janet, I want to stand before my Savior and hear well done. I want Him to be proud of me. I had a very strong daddy. Very hard, strong daddy. The one thing I strive for all my life as a young man was I wanted my daddy to be proud of me. It's one of the first ones I told when God called me to preach. How hard was he looked at me and said, I wonder how long that'll last. And he was right. Ain't nothing else ever stuck. And I'm glad I stood by his bedside and went to glory. And he told me, thank you. <laughs> Is your heart for God bigger than the heart for you? Do you want to make the Lord proud of you? Hallelujah. Well, I was thinking about this message, and I mean, God just, I mean, you know, Brother Norma, sometimes you have sermons. I preach a lot of sermons. Then every now and then, and I can only probably remember on two hands through 31 years, boy, when I knew God sovereignly shot something at me. I mean, I preach the Bible, that's right. But I'm talking about, boy, them things you can't get away from. Because I thought this week when God put this on my heart, I thought this week, Brother Bill, don't forget that. Make sure you write down. Because, you know, I'll get thoughts. You guys call preaching what I'm talking about. If you don't get it down, you may, the devil try to get it out of your mind. You'll forget it. But I couldn't forget that. It wasn't even close to forgetting this one. It was etched. It was etched. I want you to come back tonight. Because here's the deal. Knowing you have a heart for God is wonderful. Knowing that your flesh is tough is great. But here's the whole deal. If you don't learn how to defeat it, you're going to always be a loser when it comes to living your Christian life. Amen. I think God gave me some things to help every single one of us. Preacher, why do you make it so applicable to you when you're preaching too? Because I get so sick of the mentality in this country that preachers somehow are way beyond their flesh. I'm still robed in this flesh. Just like you. And we all need God to make us better. Amen. Now don't leave here today thinking, Lord, I want what the preacher done. He must be done throwing Wendy out. And he must be running stealing. And <laughs> Sometimes you might be surprised. It ain't always big stuff that gets me. Right? Sometimes it seems little foxes. It's hearing your Sunday school teacher say, I read my Bible through three times the first year I got saved. I haven't read a Bible through three times in 31 years. Per, in a year. In a year. I've read it through, but in a year. You say, well, it don't matter how many times I read it. It may not, but that's a heart for God. Amen. I wish you could have heard a testimony this morning about that, being the bartender, getting saved, how to, how to go into that place that night, offer commitment after he got saved. That was good. You, you folks ought to appreciate that Sunday school class. I'm usually having to prepare to go preach and get my mindset, but today I just said, Lord, I'm taking, I'm just coming in there and getting some help. Thank you.